Livestock farmers have three significant areas of expenditure – fertiliser, feed and vet bills. One way to maximise profit margins is to keep these costs low. There is one type of lay that will make a real impact on all three costs – a herbal lay. In recent decades the ryegrass monoculture has been popular as it responds well to nitrogen fertiliser and offers high yields. However, with the current price of fertiliser reaching record levels, this option is becoming less attractive. In addition, ryegrass-only swards are relatively low in protein, so may mean extra feedstuffs are needed, including vitamin and mineral supplements. The herbal lay offers a radical solution in this situation. By using a complex seed mixture, farmers can produce their own high-protein, healthy feed and dramatically reduce fertiliser usage and veterinary costs. Accounts of herbal lay usage stretch back over a hundred years. Well-known supporters of this type of sward, like Robert Elliot, who devised the Clifton Park farming system, wrote about deep-rooting, soil-improving swards that fattened beef cattle and finished large numbers of sheep. Herbal lays contain deep-rooting grasses, nitrogen-fixing legumes and medicinal herbs. Seed mixtures can contain as many as 17 species, all with varying growth patterns and habits providing wholesome forage for much of the year. Forage legumes such as red and white clover, trefoil and sanfoil in a lay mixture have a number of advantages. They are largely drought resistant, which has been a real bonus to those on dry land in recent summers. But it's the high protein content of these forage legumes that makes them really attractive. Clover, for example, has around 20% crude protein. Legumes fix nitrogen, free of charge, and lots of it. Grass swards that comprise around 30% legumes will not need any artificial nitrogen fertiliser. This has always been true of lays with a high percentage of clover. However, with nitrogen prices skyrocketing and fertiliser being the main variable cost of grass production, this gives a real incentive to use legumes again. Most farmers who do not use legumes say they would be concerned about bloat if they did. Bloat is a dreadful condition, but thankfully it's not that common. Stands of pure clover, or swards with really high levels of clover, can pose a risk, but it's long been known that bloat never occurs with certain fodder legumes, such as sanfoin and burstfoot trefoil. These species contain condensed tannins, which are chemical structures that have been identified at preventing bloat. Sheep and cattle farmers can exploit the beneficial effects of tannin-containing plants by incorporating them in grass lays. Herbal lays containing even low levels of these bloat-preventing forage plants have a near zero risk of bloat, a massive bonus to farmers. There is also evidence that condensed tannins can increase both the ovulation rate and lambing percentages in sheep. This may well be the case for other ruminants, but further research is necessary to confirm this theory. The two major cost savings of homegrown protein and lays self-sufficient in nitrogen would be enough to get the interest of most livestock producers, but there's something else. There are health benefits which mean reduced veterinary intervention and due to more wholesome diets, better results from breeding stock. Some plants have remarkable properties that are not related to yield or live weight gain. Sanfoin, Birdsfoot trefoil and chicory are proven to be anthelmintic, they're natural wormers. Sanfoin in particular has been the subject of a recent EU project known as Healthy Hay. As a result of four years' work involving 12 European research institutes, it is now clear that sanfoin can significantly reduce the worm burden in cattle and sheep. Perhaps the most striking thing about herbal lays is the fact that of the 15 or so species sown together, not one of them seems to take over. This is a real advantage, and the complete opposite of a ryegrass clover lay, for example, where either the clover or grass can dominate depending on the time of year or soil fertility. The harmonious balance between species in a herbal lay means there is little risk of bloat, and any problems associated with breeding stock and excesses of oestrogen in red clover are mitigated. One noticeable difference between a simple ryegrass lay and a herbal lay is the herbal lay's ability to withstand dry summers. 
The deep rooting nature of these mixtures was noticeably beneficial last summer when many farms in the Midlands and the south of England struggled to produce sufficient grass. That just was not the case for those growing herbal lays. Plants that have very different growth habits can successfully coexist both above and below the ground. The fibrous roots of grasses like Coxfoot and Timothy are able to reach many feet through the soil. Alongside these, the long tap roots of many clovers also go down deep, drawing moisture from below where the shallow rooted grasses can reach. The many species that make up a herbal lay, each with its own growth habits and biology, benefits the soil in as many ways. The tap roots of chicory and some legumes can break through soil pans, improving soil structure. The root structure of grasses increases soil organic matter, so boosting microbial activity. Once the herbal layer is ploughed in, the health and fertility of the soil will be hugely improved for the next crop in the rotation. Herbal layer seed mixtures cost more than ryegrass only mixtures. In fact, 50 to 75 percent more. However, the establishment costs are the same, but there will be some that say the seed cost is too expensive. To balance this viewpoint, it must be remembered that these lays are largely self-sufficient once established, requiring no nitrogen fertiliser and producing superb forage and healthy livestock. It's very much a case of short-term pain for long-term gain. Herbal lays are easy to establish provided the soil is warm enough. Grasses need a temperature of around 7 degrees centigrade for germination but the clovers and herbs need warm soils at around 10 degrees. Ideally, these lays should be sown after the application of manure or following a good root crop like grazed turnips. Farmyard manure increases microbial activity in the soil, which results in higher quantities of plant nutrients being available to the new seedlings. These lays contain many small seeded species, and it's important to shallow sow into a very well worked seedbed. Broadcasting is preferable to drilling as this leads to a more even plant distribution. The recent availability of comb harrows with seed distributors has provided another option. Once sown, the seeds should be rolled immediately to ensure good soil to seed contact. To get really high numbers of seeds to germinate, sowing should be made from late March. In most districts, the soil is too dry for germination in June and July. Autumn sowings though can commence in late July and are good until mid-September. Anything later than this should be postponed till the following spring. Herbal lays are best put into a rotation for around four years. They are ideally suited to grazing, but can be cut for silage if required. With so many species in the mix, this type of lay flattens the peak of forage production, extending the grazing season. Perfect as a grazing sward, the herbal lay should be rotationally grazed to get the most from it. It can be set stocked, but like any grass area, this is not the best way to get quality forage. These are difficult times for livestock farmers, with ever more volatile farm gate prices and input prices rising much faster than inflation. There is also an increasing pressure to farm in a sustainable way. For farmers who want to increase herd health, reduce expenditure on nitrogen fertiliser, improve forage quality and boost soil health, the herbal lay is the answer.